legendary July 4th celebration didn't end this year with the Boston Pops fireworks spectacular. Gordon Hayward provided the encore for Celtic fans, agreeing Tuesday night to a deal worth nearly $128 million, giving the C's offense a much needed boost. Thank you, Utah, but Gordon Hayward has some unfinished business to take care of, and he plans to make it happen, playing for a team that has already hung 17 championship banners. Well, on the one-year anniversary of Kevin Durant bolting OKC for the Bay Area, July 4th, 2017 features another small market getting the short end of the stick. Welcome to another free agent frenzy edition of game time. He's the three-time NBA champ. I'm Jared Greenberg. Rick Fox, we've got a lot to talk with you about here. We'll get reaction from Salt Lake City, figure out how they are going to move on, what they'll do as they try and recover after losing the franchise's eighth all-time leading scorer. Gordon Hayward coming off a career year in which he made the All-Star team in the Western Conference. So Gordon Hayward in Boston, what does this do to the landscape of the Eastern Conference? Well, barring uh, uh, if they can keep it all together here and, and they have to get him in, obviously, financially. Uh, but it probably makes it, I think, makes it a two-team race as, as of today. But, you know, Cavs can make adjustments. Raptors can make adjustments. Uh, obviously, the Wizards still dealing with the Otto Porter uh, addition or subtraction. So, but I like what they've done. I think they've made themselves a better team, uh, stronger. Uh, and this is coming off a Eastern Conference uh, first place finish. Let's get Regular the, pers- the perspective of our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge, who's been all over this roller coaster of a story, which Tuesday started, stopped, started, stopped several times. If you're watching on social media, it was tremendous. But DA talking with us earlier on Tuesday about Hayward, obviously now a reunion with his former college coach, but it goes way beyond that in terms of why this will work and why it makes sense for the Celtics. It gives Brad Stevens all kinds of options in terms of lineups and, and how he wants to play, and he can go small, and he, he can go big. I mean, he could put Gordon Hayward at the two sometimes. I mean, there's a lot of things that he could do <clears throat> with Gordon, and it's, it's a, it makes them, it gets them closer. And now it's, uh, you know, Cleveland's got to come up with something. KDA says it makes Boston closer. What does this do to the gap as the Celtics try and chase down the Cavaliers. Well, it gives him a lot of versatility, as he pointed pointed to. Uh, Gordon Hayward is a second option, or in some cases, first option, depending on the matchup defensively. Uh, we know what the Cavs have been, but at the same time, that's three straight runs to the finals. Uh, a fourth, I'm sure they're aspiring, you know, to to obtain. But physically, will they be able to stay fresh and and as healthy and as competitive as they have? In the past, I don't know. They struggled with it this year in the regular season. I don't think the Cavs can stand Pat. And right now, they still are looking for a general manager. Uh, and I think they need an additional uh, tinker here in their roster. So you think Gordon Hayward gets the attention of the Cavs? Yes. But yes. I think he gets the attention of the entire Eastern Conference, uh, as I pointed to with the, the Raptors. They brought back some key players. But still, uh, we knew what the Raptors were and may still need to make some, adi- you know, some additions themselves. And then the Wizards, uh, growing steadily there with their youth, but on the fence here with Otto Porter. Uh, his his addition, I mean, his subtraction would really hinder, I think, you know, their growth. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to that side of the story here. Let's focus on on Isaiah Thomas and Gordon Hayward. D- does it a guy who was in contention in the running for MVP this year? D- does this change his game? How does it help or hurt what he's been doing? Well, it makes his game a lot easier. Uh, A lot of, you know, attention was paid to him in the fourth quarter, yet he still led the league fourth quarter points uh, on an average. I don't think that will change. Uh, A lot of flexibility with his ball handling and and shot creating uh, capabilities. Uh, But man, I tell you, you have to keep keep honest out there if Gordon Haywood's on either the right or left wing coming off of that pick and roll. And like I said, matchup wise defensively, Gordon has been doing it for Utah for a number of years now himself, handling the responsibilities down the stretch in the fourth quarter. Two options. Uh, to that magnitude, gives you great flexibility. So it is, we, we were wondering heading into the playoffs if, if Boston would have a consistent number two guy, but do they now maybe have a number one guy? Is, 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 who, gets, number ones. Well, who gets the, the last shot? Well, like I said, it's matchup. It's always matchup uh, based, but they got two number ones now. 
which will make it easier, life a lot easier for Avery Bradley, uh, Crowder, Al Horford, you know, individuals that, you know, we're going to obviously get some easier shots taken. With so many talented players heading west or staying west this offseason, how smart of a move was this for Gordon Hayward? Whether he wins the title or not, an opportunity to make the all-star team, an opportunity to, I know he doesn't seem like a guy that cares about growing his brand, but a lot more people are going to know about him playing in Boston, playing for a team that's going to compete over the uh, length of his contract. Well, I have to think the Celtics sold a, a, you know, a longer term vision than just next year. Uh, when you think of what's happening in Cleveland as, they, as the king ages uh, and all the talk of him maybe moving out west, uh, we think about the landscape in general. The Celtics are, you know, with all the youth they have, have found their way to be the best in the East in the regular season. Mm -hmm. Now they have to cross over into a championship level uh, growth and, and mentality. He adds to that, and, and I think they can add to that for a good run here of a number of years. We're seeing it right in front of our eyes. Roster construction is going through a seismic shift in the NBA. It's about collecting talent to try and keep up with the Cavs and the Warriors. There's a lot more talent on this roster adding Gordon Hayward, but there's also a lot of players who play a lot of the same positions. You could draft Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum at the three spot in the draft the last two years. You have Crowder who plays out there, obviously more defensive oriented, but here's the kicker, Rick. In order to get Gordon Hayward onto this roster at that near max salary or max salary of about $128 million, the Celtics have let go Kelly Olynyk. They'll make some other housekeeping moves, but most notably, in order to fit him in and give him this price tag, they'll have to shed one of these salaries to make it work. Crowder, Bradley, or Smart. Danny Ainge has got a tough decision to make. Or an even more aggressive approach, which we know Danny has, uh, has a luxury of doing right now. Great roster as it stands. Unfortunately, it doesn't work financially. Mm -hmm. I, I spoke about having two number ones in Isaiah and, and uh, Gordon now in your roster, with, which makes the game easier for, and I think I said Bradley, Crowder, and right. Horford, right? But if one of those or a collection of his players there that he has to pick from, uh, along with the pick, brings even potentially another piece into this equation, could they imaginably get better? But ultimately, isn't about chasing the Cavs. So do you have to worry about hanging on to which one of these three guys is most important against Cleveland in a seven-game series? It depends who you get back in return. But yes, we know, we know what these guys together chemistry-wise have been able to do. I, the likes of Crowder and, and, and Bradley, uh, two-way players that they've developed into, known as defensive stalwarts in the past, but now offensive, uh, offensively can be trusted from behind the arc in an era where shooting the three ball is you know, imperative. Uh, so, boy, I tell you, losing one would be difficult to see go. Uh, losing both, you better come back with you know, an all-star. Yeah. Well, um, you have Gordon Hayward now who has the opportunity to be an all-star yeah. in the Eastern Conference, right? You, know, you think about all that the talent that is left, and there's certainly really good players in the East. Gordon Hayward drafted ninth overall in 2010. He was uh, 10 picks ahead of Avery Bradley, who may or may not be on the roster with him, but he's a pretty important guy to what they've been maintaining. Think about four years ago, they deal Garnett and Pierce, and four years later, less than that, really, they get themselves back to the Eastern Conference Finals and now in position to challenge the Cavs. Yeah, they've done a remarkable job just across the board, from Danny to Brad Stevens, the way he's gotten a group of young men to work together when usually young players are looking to establish themselves and define their, their worth in a league they've been able to maintain the team as the most important thing. Uh, so now going forward, I don't suspect that'll change in personality and character. When you have great character guys on your roster, it's hard to subtract those for something you don't know. And they're going to have to make a tough decision uh, to get Gordon obviously in there. Yeah. I'd hate to think that <laughs> Crowder or Bradley mm -hmm. would be out. A lot of happenings. Tuesday around the NBA, but July 4th fireworks a little louder, a little brighter, come with a little more excitement in Boston as Gordon Hayward is headed to play for the Celtics. We'll get reaction from Salt Lake City to tell you what the Jazz are going to do and what's more for Boston. Arby's new triple thick brown sugar bacon. Did you know bacon this good existed? Neither did Arby's. 
until we invented it. Arby's, we have the meat. Suction out your dough before you eat. Don't use spray paint. Be very careful, Shaby. You can quit. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. I see it all the time. A person with no insurance brings in their car to be repaired after they get into an accident. When they find out how much it's going to cost, they get this look on their face. And I can't help but think, if only they were insured by the General. At the General, you can get insured with low payments even if you have an accident or tickets on your driving record. Get your anonymous online quote and ride with the General. For a great low rate you can get online, go to the General and save some time. I want to give you some nibs about getting ready in the morning. Lord, you and me. Then we end. Then your head and we divide. And now you're ready for the night. You can quit. For free help, call 1 800 quit now. Here's a good place. What do you think of this one? Find a house close to Nana and Poppy. I bet that one's mom. It's the brightest. We will find a way for oh, Nana! Where's my boy? Good night. Good night, Dad. Good night, Mom. It's the summer season, and the NBA never stops. Follow the incoming rookies, see the impact of the draft, and don't miss any of this summer league action. The NBA heats up in the summer. Follow all the action on the NBA app, the official app of the NBA. Our own David Aldridge says the Wizards are expected to keep Otto Porter, but only after matching the offer sheet Porter is expected to sign with the Nets. Porter, this past season, the fifth best three-point shooter in the NBA, his third pick back in 2013 clearly had his best year in the NBA, his fourth in the league. Well, maybe John Wall will dust off the Dougie after the Wizards signed Otto Porter. But uh, first to the dance party, it was uh, Isaiah Thomas when he learned of Gordon Hayward that he was coming to Boston. Celtics radio voice Sean Grandy joined us earlier saying that the addition of Hayward was just Boston keeping up with the Joneses. I think we live in a... Golden State Cleveland universe right now and it's impossible after three years in a row to think beyond to what the next NBA will be after the Golden State Cleveland era is over but it will happen at some point I don't know when I don't know if it's a year away or two years away or three years away but what Danny Ainge and the Celtics have been trying to do is position themselves to be in position for when that day happens and obviously this is a, a pretty big step honestly it's a devastating day for the Jazz um, you know, probably because, you know, they, I mean, they got their hearts broke earlier today and, and then the news came out and say, Hey, let's slow down. He hasn't made a decision yet. And then, you know, this is kind of represents a second heartbreak. Well, OKC okay, not crying for Utah after they experienced this last year. Um, th this is a, a, a really tough blow for, for an organization that has a tough time landing marquee free agents. W what? What's next for Utah now that Gordon Hayward's bolted for Boston? Free agency again. I mean, they got to get out there and figure out how to plug this hole. Uh, it's still, you know, still talented uh, crop of young players that have grown together, but you subtract George Hill, you subtract Gordon Hayward. Uh, Ricky Rubio comes in, but Ricky Rubio, we've seen him with the Minnesota Timberwolves with young talent. Uh, hasn't been able to get them to the playoffs quite yet. Uh, this makes me question whether they're a playoff team after such growth, uh, you know, grow, uh, moving into uh, the last three years into that eighth spot and, and getting a taste of the playoffs. And I thought they were 
definitely a top four team heading into the season with Gordon Hayward. Uh, you, you can't say that Boston getting Gordon Hayward is such a huge boost for them and not acknowledge how devastating of a loss it is for the Jazz. Right. No, and I, and I ran ahead because I know we were, we were discussing, is this a playoff team? And I, I don't think they are as constructed right now with the subtraction uh, of Gordon Hayward. You add him to the Boston Celtics, and yes, we're talking about them competing for coming out of the East uh, to you know, compete for a championship right now. Again, as constructed here in July. But still, a lot of moves that can happen. Utah Jazz, I'm sure, full of pride, organization that has found ways to compete at a high level right. over the course of their franchise history. So someone's going to get an opportunity to step in. There's a couple of young players on there. They're going to get more minutes. They've probably been chomping at the bit waiting for the opportunity. Uh, they did retain a couple players. And, and as far as I'm concerned, Quinn Snyder has gotten his team to defend and play intelligent basketball. What does this mean? I mean, who else you, is out you, there? Well, what do you think about Rudy Gay? Kind of um, gives you that new, new age power forward who can stretch the floor. Yeah, I mean, he, he's a, he's, he is a gun for hire now, right? I mean, he's been serviceable everywhere he's gone offensively, right? But yet none of the teams that he's been a part of outside of, you know, slight uh, si signs of success in Memphis, uh, Sacramento the last few years hasn't been the case. Uh, can he go to another destination and do what Rudy Gay does? Sure. All right. Uh, well, does that make the Jazz uh, equally as good? I don't think so. All right. Well, the arms race continues as everybody tries to keep up, especially in the West, with Golden State. And L.A. making a move. Again, can't be finalized until after the moratorium, but a, a very complicated three-team deal that sends Danilo Del Gallinari from Denver to L.A. to play for the Clippers. Remember, they signed Blake Griffin. They lose Chris Paul. They've got DeAndre Jordan. Uh, Gallinari will go to the Clippers. The Clippers will give up the 2018 first-round pick they got from Houston and send that to Atlanta along with Jamal Crawford. Now, Patrick Patterson is apparently going to sign a contract in OKC. He leaves Toronto after a very successful stint there. Remember, he was part of that Rudy Gay trade, maybe a forgotten member, but he certainly was a tremendous fan favorite for Dwayne Casey and the Raptors. Okay, so uh, OKC, you've got the stretch four in Patterson joining Paul George and Russell Westbrook. You've got in L.A. Uh, another three-point shooter joining Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan. Which team significantly in improved themselves the most, L.A. or, Den or uh, Denver? Or OKC, I'm part of yeah, L.A. or I'm gonna OKC? Say, I'm going to say OKC. I, I, I mean, I, I like... I look what Taj Gibson did for, this, for the moment in Oklahoma City, but he was not a stretch for mm -hmm. uh, This gives them a player, not only that was a part of a winning environment in, in Toronto, but who shoots the ball exceptionally well and, 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 and does rebound too. Mm -hmm. So I think it makes them better. I think they take a bigger leap. To me, Danilo Gallinari and, and, and Blake Griffin is, you know, I wouldn't say they're interchangeable, but Danilo, Danilo scores the ball, takes a lot of jump shots. I don't see him doing a ton more uh, as a player bringing his skills to the Clippers. So um, good addition, mm -hmm. really good addition, but it's an offensive scoring right. addition. Um, you know, the, the Warriors continue to tweak. They, they're bringing mostly everybody back. Uh, apparently, Omri Caspi is the latest report that, that they're going to sign him, a, a guy who can, again, shoot from the outside. It, we're still waiting on Houston, right, to make that complimentary move after the, the big move with Chris Paul? Well, I think everyone's waiting on the Knicks. I think everyone's waiting on the Knicks and Mello. And quite honestly, if I'm the Knicks, I sit back and wait for somebody to make me an offer. And the, Mello wants to buy out, I'm sure. He wants to move on to pick the team he wants. And I, I think those teams are probably sitting there going, why should we give you anything when you may eventually have to buy him out? How much of a difference does, does Mello make? You hear the reports that he's interested in Cleveland or Houston, that that's where he'd approve a trade to. Yeah, I mean, that, it, it's, if he goes to one of those two teams, Instantly, those teams are in the top, uh, you know, four contending teams for a championship. Right. Gives Golden State in the Golden West State. especially more to, more to pay attention to. Yes, most definitely. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. A lot of moving pieces. And it seems like every moment there's another rumor, another trade, another signing. The big one is that Gordon Hayward is headed east. There's finally a player heading east. He's going to Boston. We'll get you more reaction there. Plus, tell you about the summer league. Dallas and the 18th pick, T.J. Leaf. Uh, Kennard is fouled. Guy that Bam! It is Gordon Hayward, and 
Horford taking note. He's all fired up, Rick. Oh, what a S. Thanks for the translation. Yes. So Gordon Hayward going to Boston. Get you some uh, news out of Summer League here. The uh, Minnesota Timberwolves drafted Justin Patton, number 16. He's going to be out for a while now. Patton is the uh, rookie center, underwent successful surgery on a broken foot. Uh, we'll see how long he is out for. Patton out of Creighton was a guy that Bam. will certainly take their time with. There's your boy, Bam. Miami and Detroit, as seen on NBA TV, the Orlando Summer League. Luke Kennard out of Duke, the floater, two of his 18 for the 12th overall pick. Detroit was up. Now London Parentes looking to give Miami the lead. And the deep trifecta. Miami's up by one. Pistons down by three. Reggie Jackson storms out of the crowd to take, no, he doesn't. Uh, Kennard is fouled shooting the three. Look at this. Huh. I think these guys have been watching too much NBA. The Fallon on the three point shot. Stan Van Gundy watching along as we go to double overtime where it's sudden death. Pierre Jackson. Oh, good to see him healthy and balling. Detroit, a big double OT win in Orlando Summer League action. We've got Indiana taking on Dallas and the 18th pick, TJ Leaf out of UCLA. He had seven points, four rebounds, three assists. Here working the post, the spin, and he wins. Jarnell Stokes, seeing him bounce around. Baseline jumper, he had 15 points. Victor Oladipo, now a member of the Indiana Pacers. Yes, going back home to his college days. Look at that, Jamal Wernie. Dallas up. Now Brandon Paul, he's throwing down. 16 points for Paul. Check out the uh, pick and roll action here. Nice. Dallas, a convincing win over Indiana. Could have used Oladipo today. Charlotte taking on OKC, Oladipo's former team. Trevion Graham. The triple try. Now Briante Weber, promising point guard, played well in the league formerly known as the D-League. Weber had 7.3 steals in this one. Trevion Graham, 19 points, 8 rebounds. How'd you like some crispy bacon? Dwayne Bacon, the theft, goes the other way. And more from Bacon, as Johnny O'Brien the third finds Bacon, who had 17 points, and Charlotte picks up a, a double-digit win in Orlando Summer League action. Could have used Russ today. <laughs> How about Paul George as well? Wednesday at NBA TV, you'll have a lot more Summer League action as it continues from Orlando and Utah. Our coverage begins at 1 o'clock Eastern and continues all the way through the 9 o'clock Eastern game out in the University of Utah between the Sixers and the Jazz. We're coming back with much more here on the big story of the 4th of July. Gordon Hayward announcing he's going to be a Boston Celtic. Whether he should leave Boston. To share your story with us. Go at the buzzer and go back to April 5th, 2010. National Championship game, Gordon Hayward for the win. Oh, just off the iron. And Hayward said in his Players' Tribune letter that it was after that game he faced what he thought was the toughest decision of his life. Consulting with Brad Stevens on whether he should leave Butler and head to the NBA, he would. He'd go on to a very successful seven-year run in Utah. And then he faced another tough decision on Tuesday, ultimately deciding to reunite with Brad Stevens because they've got some unfinished business getting that shot to go down, hoping to win a championship with the Celtics. You know about that type of I know thing. about that pain in that same building, but I can never go back and win an NCAA championship, but an NBA championship does wash that stain away a little bit. Yeah, exciting news for Boston, unfortunate news for uh, Utah fans. Derek Rose, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, ESPN, scheduled to meet with the Clippers. Good, that's a good move for him. Good move for both teams. But they gotta ex expect him to take a lot less money. Uh, how, about, how about Chris Bosh? Well, Chris Bosh is going to have his number retired. He got officially waived on Tuesday. They're going to have nobody else wear number one in Miami, but Pat Riley's got a lot of money to spend now.